Hey everybody, it's Drew from Como Comic Books, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the craziest weekend I've had buying collectibles in longer than I can remember. This may be the best weekend of buying I've ever had. I got an awesome comic collection. I picked up some books that I wanted in auction, and I even managed to pick up an original owner 80s toy collection with some major gems in it. So I hope you enjoy this one, but let's check it out. This stuff is awesome. This video is brought to you by MySlabs.com. I am out on the road today. I'm getting ready to go look at an original owner, Silver Age collection, collector only collected comics for about two years. Thankfully, those two years were 1968 and 1969. So this is a small collection, but it's got some doozies in it. I hope I'm able to bring it home, but we'll see what happens. You never really know how these things are gonna go. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, guys, we're back at the house. Let's see how we did. All right, there we have it. Inside the uh, frying chickens box. We landed it, that's right. We picked up the collection. Let's get down to the comic room and see what all we've got. As you saw, this was a great little collection. Sadly, the owner told me that over the years and various moves that a second box full of his childhood comics had been lost. I imagine that's probably where some of the skipped over issues and a lot of these runs wound up. So if you find a chicken box with a Silver Surfer number one, three, and four, and an Avengers 57 and you know the like in it, then give me a call. I wanna reunite them with their long lost siblings. Now, let's take a quick look at some of the books I picked up from a local auction house. This collection was devastating to go through. The majority of the books suffered some form of moisture damage or another, as the books had been stored in a damp basement pretty much unattended for more than 20 years. I held Bronze Age keys that were literally crumbling in my hands. I flipped through Silver Age keys whose staples had quite literally melted into the pages, and I saw a copy of Batman 251 that appeared to be undergoing some form of terraforming because there was a variety of mold and God knows what else growing in the middle of this thing. The moral of the story make sure you store your comic books properly. Now, let's take a look at some of the more notable books that I picked up. First up is Captain America 
117. You'll recognize this book as the first appearance of the Falcon. This book saw a strong price increase leading up to the release of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and is continuing to see high demand in the market. Next up, Fantastic Four, number 28. This issue features the first crossover between the FF and the X-Men in the Fantastic Four title. This 1964 Stanley and Jack Kirby classic features one of the great early meetings of two of the MCU's most highly anticipated teams. Coming up next, we have a couple of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 spec books. We've got Fantastic Four, number 66, and number 67, which feature the origin of him or Adam Warlock. Though he wouldn't make his first full appearance until Thor 165, the cameo appearances are still seeing strong increases in sales prices. Our next book I liked so much that I brought home two copies of it in the same weekend, and that is Fantastic Four Annual Number 6, which features the first appearance of Annihilus. When the FF shows up in the MCU, most people are assuming that they will face a villain other than Doctor Doom, since Fox relied heavily on the Latverian ruler in their films. So if you want to avoid Doctor Doom, Annihilus is a leading contender to battle it out with the Fab Four when they make their MCU debut. Next, we have the big one of this collection, Iron Man number one. This nice mid-grade copy is just what it's advertised as being, the big premiere issue of Iron Man's solo title. This classic Gene Colan cover and the natural jumping on point for Iron Man fans makes this book very desirable in the market. Next up is one of the tougher Bronze Age number ones to track down, Night Nurse number one. This book has some damage at the top right hand corner, but even so, this book doesn't fall into your lap very often, which is why I decided to pick it up. Another anticipated character in the MCU is Namor the Submariner. And if you're like me, there are two main villains you would expect to see Namor face off against in a Submariner movie. And those are Atuma and Tiger Shark, with the latter making his first appearance in Submariner number five. Team Tiger Shark speculators are on the hunt for this one. And our final two books we're going to talk about are a pair of Jim Steranko classics, X-Men number 49 and 50. Premiering on the cover of issue 50 is Steranko's newly designed X-Men logo, which as he tells it, he designed solely because he did not want to put what he thought was a terrible logo above his artwork after he had to do so with this issue. 50's Polaris cover is one of the most beautiful covers of the Silver Age, and if you ever have a chance to have one signed by Steranko, he has a metallic green marker that is absolutely perfect for this book. MySlabs.com is a great new marketplace for buying and selling collectibles. Having recently expanded into raw comics, collectors can now sell their raw and slab comics on a single platform. MySlabs.com has some of the most competitive fees in the industry, Let's check out the latest from MySlabs.com. The platform designed by collectors for collectors just got even better. MySlabs.com is proud to now feature dedicated sections for both raw cards and raw comic books. Browse over 100,000 slab collectibles authenticated by the industry's most trusted grading companies. Then check out a massive selection of sealed wax and now raw singles and raw lots. Join a passionate, no-nonsense community of nearly 50,000 members and enjoy some of the best buyer and seller protection in the business. And as always, MySlabs offers one of the most disruptive pricing models in the hobby with seller fees as low as only 1%. So the next time you're forced to pay 10%, 20% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com, the low fee marketplace by collectors for collectors. Did I mention I also bought a toy collection? I know this is a comic channel, so I'll keep it brief, but here's some of the highlights of the toy collection I picked up. Mostly composed of Masters of the Universe figures, several great figures were not only in the collection, but were also complete. Notable figures included Mosquitoor, King Randor, Clamp Champ, a Horde Trooper, and Snake Face. But the real bell of the ball is the nearly complete Eternia playset. In fact, the Eternia was never even assembled by the original owner. I put it together for the very first time in my basement after I brought it home. 
And let me tell you, assembling a 40 year old playset with no hard copy instructions, a bad British YouTube video, and some illegible scans of the instructions on Google made for an interesting project. Also included in the collection were a nice set of Inhumanoids, some Thundercats, and a few Star Wars toys, including a hard to find Wicket from the Ewoks cartoon toy line. It was an expensive but incredibly memorable weekend around here. Most of the books and a good chunk of the toys will be for sale, so come and see us at a show sometime soon for a chance to pick up some of these great items. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. For more comic book content, check out one of these two videos right over here. Collect responsibly. I'll see you in the next one.